to just thank you, God, tonight for this opportunity that we have to one more time come into your presence and praise and worship you. God, I just pray that you'll inhabit the praises of your people as your word says you will. God, let faith be created in our hearts tonight as we hear your word. God, let us leave refreshed, changed, encouraged because of what you would do by your Holy Spirit. We come to give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.
worthy. Can you praise Him tonight? Jesus, you're worthy. You're deserving of our highest praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. You've been so good. You've been so faithful, Lord. And we want to remember, God, we want to worship you, Jesus, tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, crucified, you bled and died to save. Thank you. 
the master over everything in our life, in this church, in our community, Jesus. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord God.
thank you tonight for your amazing grace, your amazing love, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You've always been there for us. God, we're so grateful tonight. We're grateful that you love us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. You don't have a finicky love for us, God. You love us unconditionally, and God, we're grateful for that tonight. Pour out your love into our hearts. God, teach us from your word tonight. Let us sense that you're near, that you're speaking to us, and God, help us to respond to you and to your word in a way that blesses you tonight. We want to mature. We want to grow. We want to know you more tonight through your word. We just give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you the remainder of this service. Have your way in each heart, we pray. We thank you in Jesus' name.
catch that song again. Sometimes when the devil is whispering that we're not going to make it, when he's filling our minds with his lies and his accusations, we need to just turn on that song, right? And we need to hear that victory is going to be ours. We're not going to end up in defeat. If the devil could do everything he threatened, he would have done it a long time ago, right? And we can rest in the victory that Jesus purchased for us. And so we're going to continue uh, with uh, what we looked at this morning. The words of that song says, If I hold my peace and I let the Lord fight my battles, if I sing and shout, have faith and never doubt, victory, victory shall be mine. Amen? And God wants to give us victory. If we'll go His way, we can experience it. Uh, let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 20. And we're going to read verses 1 through 17 again and uh, we'll pick up where we left off from this morning. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some who told Jehoshaphat, saying, There comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side, Syria. And behold, they be in Hezon, Hezazon, and Tamar, which is in Gedi. Verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse 5, And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And rule not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand you? Are not you our God, who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend, forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built you a sanctuary therein for your name, saying, If, when evil comes upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto you in our affliction, then you will hear and help. Verse 10, And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us, to come to cast us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Verse 13, And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Here's one of the key phrases I want us to remember from this passage. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Amen? The battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jer Jericho. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And again, we're going to emphasize verses 15 and verse 17. The battle is not yours, but God's. And then the instructions that God gives us in verse 17. Can you turn me down just a little bit? I'm getting a little bit of a ring up here. Praise the Lord. So we want to look at uh, these seven instructions that God gave. We looked at the first four this morning, and we won't spend a long time on those. And again, if you missed this morning's service, uh, be sure and uh, check out the live feed or check out our YouTube channel or podcast, and you can uh, catch a little bit more in depth what we talked about this morning. But number one, this morning we talked about we have to recognize and we have to acknowledge uh, that uh, the battle is not yours, but God's. And that's what we can see in verse 15. Sometimes that's easier to say than it is to do, right? When you're in the midst of difficulty and adverse circumstances, things that are so much bigger than you. But we've got to say, God, this battle is yours. I need your help to fight it. I need your help to see it accomplished. 
And uh, that's fine, just leave it. It's fine. Is this one muted? This one needs to be muted. That's probably what's ringing. All right, and then we looked at number two, you won't need to fight. Verse 17 tells us that, right? God says you don't even have to fight to receive the victory. Jesus has already fought the fight that needed to be fought, amen? When he said it is finished at Calvary, he provided everything that we need for life and godliness, and that's why we don't have to fight in most of the battles that we're fighting in because Jesus has already won, amen? If we'll just believe in him, place our faith in Jesus and the cross, he shares his victory with us. And we can triumph, as we read from 2 Corinthians this morning, chapter 2, I think it's verse 14. We can always triumph if we always stay in Christ. It's when we get outside of Christ and in self-effort or our own ideas, we try and solve the problem or fight the battle. That's when we get into trouble. But victory is going to be ours if we realize we don't have to fight he said, just set yourselves. We talked about that this morning, number three. We can see that in verse 17. That's like when you come home from a long day's work and you find that lazy boy chair and you just sit down and you're not going anywhere for a while because you're, you've had a long day. Our faith needs to be fixed in who Jesus is and what he's done for us if we're going to see victory. And we don't need to cower. We don't need to run and hide when the enemy starts making his noise and breathing his threats. We just need to set ourselves. Then number four, what we closed out with this morning, he said, you stand still. That fidgety little eight-year-old boy who's waiting to get his hair cut, right? At Great Clips or Super Cuts. And that hairstylist is going, oh no. <laughs> I don't want to have to cut that person's hair, right? And the mom is saying, just be still. You're going to lose an ear if you don't be still. Sometimes God is saying that to us, isn't he? He's saying, would you just be still? I've got this under control. I'm sovereign. I'm the King of kings. I'm still the Lord of lords. Your circumstances haven't changed who I am. Just stand still. And so that's where we left off this morning. And we need to put those instructions into practice. But I want us to look at the final three instructions that God gives us. And you can see most of these in verse 17 of 2 Chronicles 20. So number five tonight... Prepare yourself to see the salvation of the Lord. It says that in verse 17. Stand still and prepare yourself to see the salvation of the Lord. That word salvation, it means deliverance. It means help. It means aid. Hence victory. It means welfare and prosperity. That's all wrapped up in that word salvation. So often when we think of the word salvation... When we're talking about the Bible or Christianity, we think of just that first time when we get justified, when we get born again. But I know I've been serving the Lord for over 40 years, and I still need His help. I still need His aid. Amen? Don't you, as a Christian, as a believer, we need the salvation of the Lord, and He saved me more than once. <laughs> Amen? He saved me from myself and my foolish pursuits. He saved me from the world, the flesh, and the devil more than once. And thank God He did forgive us and we became born again. We became Christian, whatever that was, for me when I was five. But that's not where God's salvation stopped. Amen? That was really where it only began. And He's still wanting to give us deliverance. He's still wanting to give us help and aid, welfare and prosperity. If we'll prepare ourselves to see the salvation of the Lord, He's going to bring it in our lives as believers. Satan says, just look at your checkbook. Right? He says, just look at that doctor's diagnosis. The devil says, just look at how lost your family is. Or look at how hopeless your situation appears to be. And that's what Satan wants to get your eyes on, right? The natural, what your five senses can detect. But God is telling you tonight, he's telling you to have eyes of faith. Amen? Prepare to see the salvation of the Lord. All that Jehoshaphat could see and Judah and Jerusalem could see was what? These large armies that were so much bigger than them coming against them. And isn't that the way Satan gathers his forces against us at times? The enemy comes in like a flood and we're like, oh Lord, what's going on? He's saying, have eyes of faith. Stop looking at your checkbook. Stop looking at your doctor's diagnosis. Stop looking at the impossibility of the circumstances or the situation that you're in in your own strength. And God says, see the salvation of the Lord. Have eyes of faith. See things 
as God sees them. Amen? Prepare yourself to see the salvation of the Lord. As we said this morning, God is Alpha, the beginning, amen? And He is Omega, the ending. And He sees everything in between. All we see is just a very narrow view of our circumstances and what's going on. And we don't see God move the first time we cry out in prayer. And we're like, God, what is going on? And He says, if you could just see the bigger picture. If you could just see what I see. If you could just have my eye view and have eyes of faith. You would see that I'm working this all together for your good. Amen? God, either, God doesn't cause every difficulty and every adversity in our life, but He allows it. And sometimes He allows it because He has something in the long run that He's wanting to develop in us. So we need to have eyes of faith. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Hebrews 11.1, 1, it tells us, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So sometimes we don't see what God's doing in the situation. And He's saying, just believe me, just trust me. And that's what faith is really all about. If you could see it, it wouldn't be faith, right? Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. God's doing something so that He can receive the glory. And if we'll just have eyes of faith, God, help me to see from your eye of you. Help me to have your perspective. He's going to help us see the salvation of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says this, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. God wants us to have our eyes on eternity. Amen? He's an eternal God. He's preparing us an eternal home. The circumstances of this life are but a vapor that's going to pass very quickly. Amen? And so our decisions and what we're looking at needs to not be the temporary and the fleeting and the frivolous, things that really won't matter when the trumpet sounds, but our eyes need to be fixed on what's going to matter, what's going to count, what's going to be uh, having a bearing upon our life, 10,000 years from now, when we're walking streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, amen, we're seeing Jesus face to face. We need to have our eyes, the eyes of faith, upon what is eternal, not upon the temporary, if we're going to experience victory in our situations, victory over the world, victory over our own flesh, victory over the devil. We've got to have our eyes looking at the right things. Victory is going to be ours if we will stop looking with eyes of flesh at the temporary and instead ask the Lord, God, I need your help to see things from your perspective. Amen? Ask the Lord to help you see things from His perspective, from His eye of view. We need to prepare ourselves to see the salvation, the help, the aid, the prosperity, the welfare of the Lord that He wants to bring in our situation. It's coming, God says. Victory will be yours if you will just believe God and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Number six, the sixth instruction that God gives us in this passage from 2 Chronicles, 7, or 2 Chronicles 20, if we're going to see uh, victory in our lives, do not fear nor be dismayed. Fear is one of the enemy's biggest tactics, isn't it? Satan, he likes to immobilize us with fear, scare us, Listen to this uh, quote that I, I found. I think it's very apropos, something that we need to be reminded of. I am inwardly fashioned for faith, not for fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. These are my native air. A John Hopkins doctor, University doctor says, We do not, do not know why it is that worriers die sooner than the non-worriers, but that is a fact. But I, who am simple of mind, think I know. We are inwardly constructed in nerve and tissue, brain cell and soul for faith and not for fear. 
God made us that way. To live by worry is to live against God's reality. Amen? God's fashioned each one of us, if we're believers, for faith, not fear. That's what spins in heaven, amen, is proper faith. And who Jesus is and what he's done for us, that quote by Dr. E. Stanley Jones, is something that we need to remember as we walk this walk of faith. Don't let the devil stir up fear in your heart, but believe God, trust him, let him calm your fears. Although Satan would like us to, we don't live in the what ifs. Amen? As Christians. We don't live in the what ifs. That's where Satan would like to keep us, right? Tormenting us in our minds with the what ifs. As Christians, I preached a message about it a couple of years ago. We live in the what is. Amen? Not in the what ifs. We live in the what is. Where do we find the what is? From God's word. God, what do you say? What do you say? I can't live in a hypothetical. What if this happens? What if this goes on? What if this situation doesn't work out. I can only live in what is, what God says about my situation, and how many know that's a whole lot better place to live. We're designed, we're made for faith, not for fear. Amen? Don't live in the what else. 1 John 4, 18. Many of us could probably quote this verse. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. All right? And the only perfect love there is, is love that comes from God. God is love. Amen? That's what 1 John says many, many times in the pages of that book. That God is love. He loves you perfectly. And because He loves you perfectly, nothing is going to happen to you that God doesn't either cause or allow. Right? And so we have no reason to fear perfect love, knowing that we're loved perfectly by a God who is perfect, means we don't have to have fear. Fear can be cast out. My sovereign God, my Jesus who went to the cross to take away my sins and my fears, He's going to take care of me. Amen? And we've got to have that confidence according to 1 John 4, 18. Stop looking at the battle and look to Jesus who is bigger and stronger than your battle. Stop looking at the enemy with all his clamoring and intimidation tactics and look to Jesus who has already defeated every enemy at the cross over 2,000 years ago. Stop looking at what you know is impossible in your own limited strength and abilities and look to Jesus, the one who delights in what is impossible. Amen? You can't do it, and what you can't do, you can't do. But what you can't do, sometimes God can do. Amen? Most of the time, God can do. And so if we'll look to Him, He delights in what man calls impossible. We need to start looking at the right things. Don't be fearful. Don't be dismayed when the enemy comes against you. Matthew 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God, what? All things are possible. Amen? Self-effort may not get the job done. We may not have it in our own strength, our own abilities, our own uh, smarts or ingenuity, but God is, is sovereign. He's big enough to handle all things are possible with Him. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said unto him, If you can believe... All things are possible to him that believes. Amen? Victory is possible if we'll just believe God. Amen? God, I don't know how you're going to do it. Don't dictate to him how it has to happen. Amen? Just say, God, I believe your word, and I don't know how you're going to provide for my finances, but God, I believe you are Jehovah Jireh. If you give me a pay raise, if you send me a check in the mail, however you want to bless me, God, I believe that you are Jehovah Jireh, and all things are possible for them who believe. God, I don't know how you're going to fix the seemingly impossible situation that's staring me in the face, but God, I know it's not bigger than you. I know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think. God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. Victory is going to be ours if we will ask the Lord to help us replace our fear and our dismay with properly placed faith. In Jesus and the cross. Amen. It really comes down to do we really believe the words of Jesus. One of his seven sayings upon the cross. When he said it is finished. Do we really mean 
Do we understand what he meant, meant by that? Do we really believe what he meant by that? It is finished. Not only was the salvation plan of God finished, but life and life more abundantly was finished. Right? Everything that we need for life and godliness, Jesus purchased it. And so we can replace our fear and our dismay and our worry and our doubts and our anxiety with properly placed faith and say, God, I believe you. I'm going to trust you. You're the way maker. You're the one who can do what's impossible. God, I'm going to trust you. Number seven, the seventh instruction that we can see in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 of how we can have victory. Victory can be ours. Number seven, go out against the enemy. Verse 17, go out against the enemy. You can't win until you face your enemies face to face, right? Sometimes you're going to have to speak out loud and tell Satan, I've had enough. You've messed with my family long enough, and you say out loud the word of God that he's put in your heart and given you confidence about, and you tell the devil, you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. You tell him, get your hands off my family, get your hands off my health. Get your hands off my finances because I belong to God. And you have to go out and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe sometimes with your enemy for him to stop messing with you. And you have authority, not in yourself, but in the name of Jesus. And when you do that in faith, God's going to give you victory when you go out against the enemy. Judah and Jerusalem would never have had victory over all these armies if they stayed cowering in their homes, right? They had to get up and go out where God told them to against the enemy. And we need to understand we have to do the same. Satan, your enemy, wants you to cower in fear, to hide under your bed, so to speak, rather than to believe God for your victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. You remember the story, the servant of Elisha? When the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. I underlined those words. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, the servant, and he saw. Now behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Amen? If we go out against the enemy, how many know there's forces of heaven that are fighting with us, for us? God is going to be fighting for us. More are those who are with us than those who are against us. If we'll stand up in faith and say, Satan, no more. No more are you going to build strongholds and, and, and uh, acquire footholds in people's lives here in Colorado Springs. We're going to preach the message of the cross. We're going to preach the truth of the gospel so that people can be set free. We're going to have to go out where the enemy is working his uh, lies and his deception and his wicked schemes. And we're going to have to confront the enemy and say, no more. In Jesus' name. Speak the truth. In Jesus' name, do the ministry that he's called us to do. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. He's going to give you what you need when you go to stand up against the enemy to see victory. Amen? To see uh, a change for the better in the circumstances that you're facing. To see the battle turned in your favor so that you can experience victory and have a testimony of His mighty power at work in your life. If God is for us, who can be against us? How can we know God is for us? Have faith in His Son. Have faith in His redemption plan. Amen? Have faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It's what the enemy fears, isn't it? The enemy fears the cross of Christ. The enemy fears the blood of Jesus Christ. And if we will place our faith there, God will be for us and no one will be able to stand against us when we go out to face the enemy. God's looking for some believers in these last days who have a fierce, unwavering faith in Jesus and the cross 
who will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy. Have you ever had to do that in your life? Someone kept picking a fight with you maybe when you were younger? I had it happen many times. I was a newspaper boy when I was in sixth grade, and this one boy kept coming and trying to steal. I was back when you had to collect your, uh, your money every month. You had to go knock on the door and collect the money from the newspaper customers. This one boy kept coming and trying to take my money. And so my mom and dad finally said, well, just stand up to him. He's smaller than you. Because <laughs> I was taller than everybody else in my grade. And he was, he was maybe a grade older than me, but I was still bigger than him, tall, tall at least height-wise. And uh, so one of the days I finally decided, well, I'm going to have to do with my parents. I wasn't a fighter, but I stood up to him and said, no, you're not taking my money. If you want to take my money, then here it is. Come get it. And stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, and he didn't bother me again from that day forward because he knew I'd punch him in the face and was not going to stand for it. Sometimes we've got to stop letting the devil make a doormat out of us and walking all over us. God's looking for some people who will believe in the Lord, who will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy, maybe even look death square in the eyes and not back down. Never stop believing God for the impossible. God's wanting to raise up some people like that. Amen? In these last days. I think that's the kind of faith it's going to take to survive these last days before Jesus comes back. We may have to look death straight in the face and say, no, I'm not going to abandon my God. I'm not going to abandon my faith in Jesus. May God raise up some people like that right here at Finished Work Worship Center. Amen? A fierce faith that won't quit. God, I want to believe you. May, may God raise up some people like that here in Colorado Springs. Amen. We'll see a revival. We'll see a reformation take place if we will just not quit believing God. Go out against the enemy and say, no, no, no. You're not going to prevail here anymore. Truth is going to prevail. Amen. And stand toe to toe and claim our victory that Jesus has given us as a possession. Amen. He's promised us the heathen for our inheritance, meaning souls being saved. And let's not settle for less than what Jesus has promised us. Victory is going to be ours if we will go out against the enemy, fully understanding the authority and the power that there is in the name of Jesus Christ because of the cross. Amen? There's power and there's authority in the name of Jesus. The enemy is going to run. He's going to flee if you stand in the right authority. And he's not going to prevail in your situation, in your family in our community anymore if we'll stand up against him go out against the enemy and so i want us to think about these seven instructions that god's given us in this message the battle's not yours it's god's you don't need to fight just set yourselves stand still prepare to see the salvation of the lord because it's coming it's coming victory is coming the answer is coming don't be afraid don't be dismayed but stand up in faith and say, God, I need your Holy Spirit to go with me and confront the enemy. Don't be afraid to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and claim the victory that God has promised you. Will you hold your peace today and let the Lord fight your battles? Will you follow the instructions that God gives us in His Word? Doing these seven instructions that we've looked at, Jesus paid a price so that we could live in victory. Amen. Not so that we could just barely get by or have mediocre, mundane Christianity. He paid a price so that we could live in victory. And God wants us to obey His Word. If we'll go God's way, we're going to see His victory. Amen? His shared victory in every situation that we're facing. Would you stand with me tonight? I want us to close in prayer. We pray for those this morning who have been facing a battle with sin. Maybe you're listening to this message tonight, our YouTube channel, our live feed, or on our podcast. And you've never given your heart to Jesus. Sin is dominating your life. And you know you need to ask Jesus to forgive you. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, if we say what God is saying about our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us, and He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we close with a song and with prayer, in just a moment, I want you to do that. Say what God is saying about your life, about your situation. Give Him your sins and say, Jesus, I want your forgiveness. I want your cleansing. I want to live to please you. Maybe you're a believer tonight. And as we close out with a, a couple of worship songs tonight, as we're in the presence of the Lord, maybe there's some battles that you've been fighting and you need God to give you strength. Maybe the enemy has sown fear or doubt or anxiety, worry into your mind regarding situations in your life. And God's wanting to give you faith. 
to not only fight the battles, but to win and to see his victory uh, brought in your life. I want you to give those things to God and say, God, I want your strength. I want the power of your Holy Spirit to help me. And let's believe the Lord to help us tonight. I believe he's going to do that. We're going to close out with a song. And as we sing these songs, or this song, would you just give the Lord those things in your life? Let him touch you. Let him move in your heart. And he'll touch you. He'll bring strength. If you will just allow him to. We're going to sing that song, Jesus is the Lord. And uh, listen to the words of that song. No enemy can prevail, but we know that Jesus is the Lord. Amen? That he's sovereign, that he's in control. And uh, let's just lay those needs at his feet. Give him those battles that we've been fighting. And let's let God do a work in those situations tonight. And then we'll close together in prayer.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever you're facing tonight, would you lay it at Jesus' feet? Believe God. Ask Him to increase your faith. Amen. All things are possible if we we'll just believe. Amen. And He wants us to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord for your individual life, for our families, for our church. Amen. There's still so much more, many more victories that God wants to bring to this community, to this church, if we'll just believe God. And so let's lay those things at His feet tonight and let Him work. Heavenly Father, we just thank You for Your Word today. We thank You that we can have confidence. Victory shall be ours. Lord, it's coming. You're going to send it if we'll just believe You, if we'll just look to You. And God, let us not become discouraged. Let us not become fearful or cower when the enemy begins to clamor, when he begins to line up his weapons against us. Help us to remember that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. You will refute every tongue that rises in opposition against us. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. This is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Help us to rest in that promise, God, this week. God, help us to see you helping to fight our battles and to bring victory over the world, over the flesh, over the devil in our lives. God, let us become more the people of God that you want us to be. Lord, we don't want to become stagnant or stale in our faith. We want to mature. We want to grow. We want to experience you in greater ways. So God, help us to put into practice what you've shown us today, these seven instructions. And God, let us see victory coming. God, let us see, God, you working in this church, you working in this community, bringing about the harvest of souls, bringing about the restoration of the body of Christ in this community. And let us be participators in what you're doing. God bless us as we leave this place tonight. Help us to stay close to you throughout the week. God, let us be ready to give an answer of the hope that is in us with meekness and fear, recognizing that the harvest is plentiful. God, there's many people that need to know Jesus, but the laborers are few. Let us be laborers in your harvest this week. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the praise for all that's accomplished. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.